What is up, space birds? Welcome back to another analysis video. We are here, we are continuing to do this. So, if you guys remember in the last video, we were talking about Data and Geordi. Last time on Star Trek The Next Generation. And uh, as a quick recap, my theories and interpretations of Star Trek The Next Generation was that Data is gay and Geordi is pan. But I didn't really explore how they felt about each other, and that's what we're going to do in this video. Let's just jump right into it, shall we? Let's go. All right. So, from the previous videos, which I recommend you watch first, the, the video is pretty cool. I have proven that it's possible that Data is gay and Jordy is pansexual. Now, what we've all been waiting for, are they in love with each other? Well, it's undeniable that these two spend most of their time on screen together. They work on projects with each other, solve problems, get into trouble, get everyone out of trouble, always stick together no matter what. Now, in The Next Generation, this is framed as best friends. And you might be asking, what sense their friendship apart from being just friends? Isn't that what all best friends do? Well, let's compare their relationship together with their relationships with the rest of the crew. Data has especially wonderful friendship bonds with Captain Picard, Riker, and even Worf, even though he does annoy him sometimes. Captain Picard has real respect and pride for how far Data has come in his journey, and Data has a respect and admiration for him in return. Riker, who always cares for his friends wholeheartedly, has an enormous trust for Data, which is returned. But at the end of the day, who does Data turn to when he's having a problem? Jordy, hmm. may I ask your advice in a personal matter? Sure, dear. Who does he share his deepest, darkest fears with? Jordy, have you ever had a nightmare? Who does he spend more time around than anyone else? He does care a great deal about the rest of his friends, but he always turns to Jordy. A really great way to look at how much two characters care about each other is what happens when they're taken away from each other. There's two episodes that illustrate this, but a great one is called The Next Phase. Jordy and Ro get sort of phased out of physical form and everyone believes him to be dead. And who does this hit the hardest, but none other than Data. There's just a lot of subtext in this whole episode. Listen to this, just right here, listen to this. No means. Captain, I have a personal favor to ask. I considered Commander LaForge to be my best friend. I believe it is my responsibility to plan and conduct the memorial service. Why did he hesitate? What was he about to say? It's open to interpretation. Also, in this episode, Data says this about his friend. I never knew what a friend was until I met Jordy. He spoke to me as though I were human. He treated me no differently from anyone else. He accepted me for what I am. And that I have learned is friendship. Jordy really is the most important person in his life. He's everything to him. And while this show continues to insist that Data can't feel, I'm not sensing much unfeeling neutrality in Jordy's death. He gets hit hard. I mean, come on. But I do not know how to say goodbye. If that's not enough proof for you, let's look at the scene where they reunite. Jordy, it is good to see you. Thanks, Dana. Never been to a better funeral. Uh, just, uh, come on, look at them. This this doesn't really scream, oh, best friends for me. I, I don't know about you guys, but wow. Okay, now despite what I said before, this show doesn't always insist that Data is unfeeling. There are a few times when Data's capacity for emotions is actually questioned by the show and not me, specifically by Beverly Crusher. One of those times was about Data's daughter, Lal, in the episode The Offspring, which I'm still crying about. Be there to nurture her when she needs love and attention. I can give her attention, Doctor. But I am incapable of giving her love. Now why do I find that so hard to believe? The other time was about, you guessed it, Jordy. It was in the episode Identity Crisis, where Jordy gets infected with this area alien parasite. Now, this episode is really wholesome, because there's other scenes where Data's visibly concerned for him and tries to help him stay safe and get him to rest when he works himself too hard. No interferometric patterns present. Damn. Hmm. 
Jordy. May I inquire how your investigation is proceeding? It's not. Have you attempted an audio analysis? Yes, data. And the spectrographic analysis. And a screen for ionizing radiation. I even ran an enhancement for micro-seismic disturbances. I've tried it all, okay? I'm sorry. There was no need for an apology. Perhaps if you indulged in a brief rest period, you would be able to approach this problem with a fresh point of view. Yeah, you're probably right, Data, but I've got to keep scanning these records while I can. May I assist you? If I knew what I was looking for. Really, David? I think it's just a matter of me going over it, maybe finding something I forgot. I'll let you know if I come across anything, all right? Just, yes. Also, David tries very hard to research what's wrong with him so he can fix it. Dr. Crusher knows exactly what's going on and confronts him about it. You're worried about Geordi, aren't you? I am an android. It is not possible for, for me you to... to feel anxiety. Starfleet personnel have vanished. Others may be at risk. We must do the best we can to find out why. <clears throat> However, I am... strongly motivated to solve this mystery. Beverly Crusher, oh, he's calling Data out on his, oh, I don't feel things BS. Data even agrees with her. One of the only times in which Data himself is unsure whether he feels emotions or not, and it's about Jordy, the person who he cares about the most. I'm going to repeat that. Data, who adamantly claims he doesn't feel anything, admits he feels emotions about Jordy. Let's let that sink in. Also, let's look at a scene from Phantasms, one of the most cursed Data episodes to exist. Aside from all the weirdness, there's a part where this girl, Ensign Tyler, has a crush on Jordy, and it's clear he's not interested. What's also clear is Data's complete understanding of what's going on with them. He actively tries to get between them multiple times and asks Jordy if he's ever going to talk to her and tell her that he's not interested. I'm learning so much just being around you. <clears throat> I'll tell you what. Why don't you help Pharaoh check out the deuterium cartridges? I'm just about to bring the warp core online, all right? Anything you say. Jordy, you do not seem to appreciate Ensign Tyler's enthusiasm. Mm, she's enthusiastic, all right, about me. I do not understand. She's got a crush on me, Data. You do not share her affection. Exactly, and quite frankly, it's beginning to get a little bit uncomfortable. I believe I understand. Tyler, how are you coming with that relay diagnostic? Almost done, sir. Excuse me, I need the plasma inverter. It appears Ensign Tyler still has a crush on you. It is clear you did not speak to her. No, I did. I haven't had the time. Now, a best friend might not care if someone was attracted to their friend, might even find it funny. But I feel like we crossed the friend line at a little bit at the sort of protectiveness that Data has. It would appear that you require a third party to intervene on your behalf. I will be happy to speak to her. Maybe I'm reading too much into it, but of all the times it's clear Data has emotions, this one is the most funny to me because he's obviously not enjoying how Tyler is acting around Jordy. On another note, Phantasms is another episode that explores Data's dreaming abilities. During one of the dream sequences, Jordy is the only figure in Data's dream that doesn't specifically represent anything or warn him of anything. Make of that what you will. More proof that Data is clearly displaying more than friendship affections for Jordy comes with the episode In Theory again. Before Data starts the romance program to alter his own programming, Jenna's still trying to make it work between her and this gay-ass android. Its line is both fluid and formal, yet retains an unpremeditated quality. The tactility of its surface embellishment is evocative of the neo-primitive period in Tyrrhenian blade carving. Um, 
I hadn't thought of it that way. <laughs> Give it up, sis. It's not worth it. Anyway, Jenna comes into Dieta's quarters unexpectedly while he's painting. She says she's going to leave, and she's sorry for interrupting him, all that, yada yada, and he just agrees. Then she sort of fr frustratedly explains to him that she didn't actually want to leave. She was just saying it to get him to tell her to stay. Here, just, let's just watch it. I'm sorry, don't let me interrupt. As you wish. Uh, Data? Yes? The Book of Love, Chapter 4, Paragraph 17. When your girlfriend arrives with a gift, stop whatever it is you're doing and give her your undivided attention. I should not have resumed my painting. No. Despite your suggestion that I continue. Exactly. I have much to learn. This is probably supposed to be interpreted as, oh, haha, ha, Data doesn't understand human gestures and cues, lol, that sort of thing, but skip ahead a few seasons. In the episode Inheritance, Jordy loses his mother, who was the captain of a ship that disappeared. Jordy stops by to Data's quarters, and this happens. Come in. Hey, Data. Still working? No. I've completed the adjustments to the interface. I am now waiting for Commander Riker to finish moving the probe. Do you need to be comforted? No. I was just passing by. I was wondering what you were up to. Are you certain you do not wish to talk about your mother? How would you say that? You are no doubt feeling emotional distress as a result of her disappearance. While you claim to be just passing by, that is most likely an excuse to start a conversation about this uncomfortable subject. Am I correct? No, Data. Sometimes just passing by means just passing by. Hmm. Then I apologize for my premature assumption. You know, Data, maybe you gave up a little too easily. I do not understand. Well, when I said just passing by means just passing by. I really didn't mean it. Then my initial assumption was correct. You do wish to speak of your mother. Data understands these cues. He really wanted to help Jordy. In both situations, he was in the middle of one of his artistic activities. Except with Jenna. He didn't care that he, she wanted to leave. With Jordy, he prompts him multiple times to open up so that they can talk. Either we can take this as a Data learn from his previous interaction so not to screw up the next time, or we can interpret that Data didn't care for Jenna in the way he cares about Jordy. Either way, we have to admit that both situations point to Data caring for Jordy in a more than a friendship way. It's okay to have feelings. Now, the question is, does Commander Jordy Forge return these affections? In my interpretation, the short answer is yes. Let's get into the long answer. Now, Jordy is obviously good friends with the rest of the crew. We know he cares about them a lot because they've gone through a lot together. But unlike Data, Jordy doesn't really have any specific bonds with anyone else in the crew. He doesn't have a special relationship with anyone but Data. It's not that he's not their friend, it's just that Jordy spends a lot of time in engineering and doesn't exactly know how to socially interact and relax and have fun quite as well as the other crewmates. What I'm saying is, his bond with Data is special and goes beyond anything he has with the other crew members. Yes, he could just be really good friends with him, and he bonded with him through the amazing friendship that they have, but I don't think an ordinary friendship has this much yearning, pining, and longing as Jordy puts into theirs. I mean, let's, let's just look at this for a second. How's it going? I have not been entirely successful. Feline supplement number 221. 
I don't know about Spot, but it seems to me your training is coming along just fine. Come on, let's go. Commander LaForge has rejoined the Enterprise from Ryson. Welcome back, Jordy. Data! How was the seminar? <laughs> Very informative. I'll tell you all about it. When I heard the Enterprise had been ordered to the Creo system, I thought I might be forced to endure another couple of weeks on Ryza. I'm sorry to hear you did not enjoy yourself. I was joking. Joking? Ah, forced to endure Ryza. Your actual intent was to emphasize that you did enjoy yourself. Yes, I see how that could be considered quite amusing. <laughs> I missed you, Data. The way he watches the music, the way he watches Data with Spot, the way he just listens to him and he goes on about whatever he's thinking about the moment. There's even a part where Data asks Jordy if he wants to sit with him and listen to absolute silence. He says yes. This particular poem has a lacunae of 47 minutes. You may experience the emptiness with me if you wish. Thanks. Data speaks, and Jordy just stands there listening with this big stupid grin on his face. Data talks a lot, and most of the other crew members just sort of shut him down. That's enough, Data. Thank you, Data. Data, don't babble. But Jordy never does this. He just enjoys listening to Data and being with Data more than anything else, even working on the warp core. Now, Data and Jordy have another episode where they're separated. In The Most Toys, some dumbass collector tries to get Data in his collection and frames him in a pot explosion, making him appear dead to the whole crew. This impacts nobody more than Jordy. He refuses to accept his death, repeatedly tries to figure out what caused it, and even has nightmares about the occurrence that lost him his best friend. I keep going over and over the accident in my mind, trying to figure out what went wrong. I can see Data in the shuttle. Almost like I'm sitting there next to him going through the departure sequence. Why didn't I see it coming? The reason I can't find anything is that there's nothing to find. I've run this analysis dozens of times over and there's just no indication of any malfunction. No explanation at all. Oh yeah, there's one, but I don't believe it. Pilot error? I know it's hard to accept, but even the best- Captain, it's not only hard to accept with data, it's impossible. I mean, I can't even begin to calculate the odds. It's Data were here. We can ask him. What are you suggesting, Lieutenant? I don't know, sir. It just doesn't make sense. Proceeding with departure. Enterprise shuttle bay two prepare for docking. Level one precautions remain in effect. <sighs> Jordy is absolutely devastated. He did not act this way for Tasha, that's for sure. His losing data impacted him more than any other character he lost. Also, Riker has something to say about the whole thing. For an android with no feelings, he sure managed to evoke them in others. Jordy has feelings for data. This should be obvious by now, but it's just further proof that data is the most important person to Jordy. But are these two actually in a relationship, or is it just longing? Well. Yes, and also yes. Aside from the all-around, uh, that is the episodes of Descent Part 1 and 2, there's also a nice amount of proof buried in there. First, when Lore has Data's mortal codes turned off and his emotion processors on him, causing him to be all evil like him, Lore makes Data go after and hurt Jordy because it's clear that Jordy is the most important person in Data's life, as we know, and hurting him would be the worst thing he could think of. Obviously, this leaves Jordy completely betrayed, but somehow, through all he put him through, he refuses to blame Data for what happened and for what he's doing to him, refuses to get mad at him and refuses to resent him. He just repeatedly tries to get his Data back. Once they are in place, I will destroy the existing brain cells, and we will see if the artificial neural network is able to take over your cognitive functions. Data, listen, Lore is controlling you. He's transmitting a carrier wave which is affecting your positronic matrix. Don't you care that he's manipulating you? 
But while he's trying desperately to reach his android, Jordy says this. You know, Nina, I've been thinking about some of the times we've had. Like that time we went sailing on Davala Lake, you remember that? I have a complete memory record of that day. <laughs> you decided to go swimming? <laughs> and when you jumped out of the boat, you sank straight to the bottom. I did not have enough buoyancy to get back to the surface. You had to walk over a kilometer along the bottom to get back to shore. One kilometer, 46 meters. It took almost two weeks to get the water out of your servos. I'm ready to irradiate your existing brain cells. Data, if you ever go back to the way you were, you might not be able to forgive yourself for what you're about to do. This is not only heartbreaking because it's Jordy trying everything he can to get to his friend, it also shows how deep Data and Jordy's friendship really goes. These two regularly go on, how else can I put this, dates, just to enjoy each other's company. If they were friend excursions, they would probably be going with the rest of the group, but they don't. They have experiences together that are literally just like romantic dates with the two of them. We know how much Jordy utilizes the holodeck when he tries to go out with girls. His experiences with Data aren't that much different at all. So, yes, they could be in a real relationship, at least to Jordy with his holodeck adventures. And speaking of the holodeck, Sherlock Holmes. I'm surprised I haven't mentioned this whole thing more in the video. We all know that Data has a sort of a Sherlock Holmes obsession. He loves the books and tries to solve the problems in the same way that the main character does. He also programs the holodeck multiple times to self-insert onto the adventures of his favorite character because he's so obsessed and honestly, same. But who accompanies him on these holodeck adventures? None other than the faithful Jordy LaForge. And Jordy doesn't just sort of humor Data's obsession, no, he fully immerses himself into it with him, as John Watson, complete with the cosplay and the roleplay. As we know, these two characters are notorious for having some serious gay subtext. And this is the 24th century. All the culture that's currently surrounding Sherlock's sexuality that's like happening now has already happened in the 24th century. Do they know about it? Who can say? Yes, yes, I know, I know, this series was made before all that, but it still adds a fun dimension to it. And even if they were playing Sherlock and Watson in not at all romantic way, it still provides evidence about Geordi's feelings for Data. He's so fond of him that he's willing to jump all the way in, committing 100% to play out his greatest fantasies like they're real. And he enjoys it. Computer, select at random a mystery by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, in which I will play Sherlock Holmes, and Lieutenant LaForge will be Dr. John Watson. Program complete. You may enter. All right, Data. You solve the cases and get all the gifts. What do I do? Primarily as Dr. Watson, you will keep a written record of everything I say and do. Hmm? For later publication. In the hands of some, the violin is a wondrous thing equally capable of stirring the soul to the heights of bliss as to the depths of despair. But, Data, that's incredible. How can you play it like that? Merely throwing myself into the pot, Watson. <clears throat> hmm. But in the hands of my friend, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Violin ceases to be a musical instrument at all. The game is afoot. Come, Watson. Our adversary, my dear Watson, is none other than... Jordy loves this. I, re I refuse to believe he did this as a friend. Jordy was willing to follow Data to the ends of the ship, no matter what, because he's in love with the sentient android, who, as I proved earlier, shares these affections entirely. So, that's my take on why I think these two Starfleet officers from the next generation are in a relationship, or should be in a relationship. Whether you've been convinced about this or not, we can all agree that Data and Jordy's relationship is something special, not only because it's wholesome, fun, and endearing, but because it has some really important metaphors hidden in it, like the way Data coming into his own identity and learning not to bury his sexuality, or the way that Jordy sees others, not for their genders, but for their personalities. 
Now, LGBT rights, while they were being fought for, weren't as front and center when the show came out as they are today. But Star Trek is about metaphors for life and the struggles that we all go through. So whether Jordi and Data's LGBT story and subtext was intentional or not, I'd say it's consistent with the purpose and the spirit of Star Trek. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for listening to my rant about these gays in space! Goodbye.